Welcome to Pillion Unscripted. I am Michael Severe, the place to go to hear from people who truly help Pillion feel like home. Joining us, special guest this week, he is a former, he was a Pillion native, not a former one, and now a member of the Hershey Bears. Ethan Frank joining us here on Pillion Unscripted. Ethan, how are you feeling? I'm uh, feeling great. How about yourself? I'm good, man. Uh, these last couple of weeks been pretty busy for you. Yeah, yeah, for sure. Not a lot of downtime, but it, it's been quite an experience and I wouldn't trade it for anything else. Had a chance to go to the AHL All-Star Game, of course. What was that experience like for you? Uh, it was good. Um, saw some old faces and old teammates, old rivals from growing up playing hockey. And so uh, it was good to kind of talk to them and see how stuff was going and how they've been and uh, meet some new guys as well. And it was a lot of guys' first time like mine. And so uh, it was a good experience. You know, the fans up there made it great, especially being in Canada. They all love hockey up there. So um, they made it really special for us. You're kind of the unofficial fastest man in hockey right now by either 12.9 seconds around the whole ring. I think that was faster than anyone else in the NHL as well. What was what was that like? What was the training like for that? Or just, you just, it's all about speed? Yeah, pretty much. There wasn't a whole lot of training. I guess you could say that me growing up playing hockey was the training, but, you know, I got off the plane at like one o'clock and, and the test was at like five o'clock that night. We didn't really get a whole lot of time to warm up or anything. So it was just kind of tossed in the fire a little bit, but uh, it was cool. I didn't, I didn't think that it was going to be anything like that. I knew that skating was one of my one of my strengths, and um, I've always wanted to kind of compare it to to the guys in the NHL. But um, I definitely didn't think it was going to end up with that result. Is there a key you think for your speed? Is it the turns? Because it seems like that's where most people lose their speed. What is, what's the key to you being fast? You think? Um, I'm. I think I'm more fast just on straightaways. I think I can get really low and have really long strides to to help me gain a lot of speed, but, um, no, I definitely had, had some success on the turns. The first one, I get my feet moving all the way around. And then the second one, I was going too fast to move my feet. And so I just kind of rode the edges around the net and just tried to keep as much speed as I could. What's the regular season been like for you guys so far? Uh, it's been good. It's been good. We've, we've been on uh, towards the top of the league pretty much the whole year and we've had our ups and downs just kind of and how any team does, but, um, we've learned a lot. Um, and we've obviously grown a lot closer, and kind of found our true identity, and we know what we need to do coming down the stretch with playoffs coming up. Kind of a small world, the world of hockey, being that you guys are so young going to juniors. You know, of course, some of you go to college. Like, you know a bunch of the guys just because you're out there playing all over the, the country as a youngster? Yeah, it's it's small, but it's also really big. You know, you get to the pro level, and, and I didn't really know anybody except a few guys that I've played with or against, but – um, yeah, you know, you feel like, you know, a lot of hockey people and then you hear some names and they're a great player and you're like, I've never heard of him before. I have no idea who that <laughs> is. Um, so it's kind of cool how it works because eventually you just cross paths with so many people and this guy knows that guy who knows this guy and they know all each other. And so it's kind of cool how it works. Born and raised in Papillion? Uh, I was born in Denver and moved to Papillion when I was like n eight or nine, I think. Okay. Did you, had you already started playing hockey when you were in Denver before you came here? Yeah, I learned learned how to skate. Uh, my dad owned two roller skating rinks in in Colorado, and so I learned how to skate uh, on roller first. And I didn't start playing ice hockey till I moved out to Omaha. I was probably 10, 11 years old, and I started playing ice hockey. Who'd you first play organized with? Where'd you guys play? What, what, what was that? Um, that would be the Junior Mavericks. Um, it was just kind of little Midwest tournaments, Kansas City, Des Moines, uh, some in Omaha, nothing really crazy. You know, you're just young kids. You're not really doing anything super serious or, or anything like that. You're just having fun and kind of learning the game, you know, meeting new friends or whatever. But um, it was cool because you you kind of saw how small of a hockey world it was in the Midwest and how almost unpopular it was. Mm. Uh, but now it's kind of cool to see how much it's grown and how many people like hockey. Talking to hockey parents, they always talk about early morning practices, traveling, and then stinky uniforms. Is that basically youth hockey? Yeah, for sure, especially youth hockey. I think that uh, the parents make a ton of sacrifices that a lot of people don't really realize. Um, taking off work, you know, it's it's tough. I remember when I was like 13 or 14, I'd missed almost 45 days of school. Wow. Um, so it was, it was pretty tough to stay on top of the homework and parents staying up late with you trying to figure out your homework or, you know, like you said, the early mornings and the long drives, them having to pay for the gas in the hotel uh, all just to support their kids, which is really cool to see. And yeah, as you don't really realize it when you're that age, but as you get older, you you really start to appreciate it and realize all the sacrifices that they made. How old were you when you joined the, the Lancers? That would have been four. I played there when I was 14, 15, and 16. Talk about that. How is balancing schoolwork and trying to keep up with that and being a kid and then playing on that kind of stage? 
Yeah, it was it was tough. Um, but you, you're not the only one doing it. There's a bunch of guys, and so it's kind of nice to have other people in the same situation as you are because you can ask for help and kind of lean on each other a little bit. Um, but no, it was good. It was a good experience, and uh, I think it helped me kind of grow into the man I am today. When it came time to go to college, how did you pick Western Michigan? Were, were you recruited by a bunch of different schools? How did that process work? Um, I went on a couple of visits to Minnesota and University of North Dakota, um, saw the campus and everything, thought it was really cool to see those schools, uh, but then never really got an offer from them. It just kind of faded away and then started talking to visit and they never set that up. Um, and then after my 15 year, when I was 15 from Western Michigan, um, they said they really liked a couple of days later, they offered me a scholarship. And at the time I had two teammates that were already committed there. Um, and so it was pretty easy for me to make that decision being that young, you know, you're going to school with friends and um, it was kind of far away from home and I kind of wanted to get out and kind of explore and grow up a little bit on my own. And um, yeah, it worked out well. I ended up loving Western Michigan, stayed there for five years and and had a lot of good experiences. Like most of the kids your age, COVID hit right in the middle of when you're in college, what was that like dealing with it? And I know you get the extra year, but what was it like going through the process of, of losing that time, not being able to play? It was a little difficult. Obviously, it kind of caught everybody off guard. Nobody had been in a situation like that. Um, and so it was kind of unique on how we did our summer training together. We were obviously distanced, but we were all still together as a group doing the same same training and stuff. So it was difficult, but it was fun. You know, you kind of got to get creative and in, in different ways on how you can stay in shape and still prepare yourself the same way because, you know, everybody else is doing it and getting ready for the season. So you just had to do everything you could. And it did take a little bit more work than it normally would have because you couldn't go in a gym and get some weights or whatever with everybody. But um, that was good. We we kind of got creative with it, like I said, and, and made the best of it. And in a way, you're kind of blessed, right? Because that last year, you guys go to the tournament. You have that great experience because you get that extra year. Yeah, for sure. I think it was nice, especially to me, help kind of grow up and be one of the older guys, the more mature guys to help younger guys kind of realize what college hockey was like and and kind of show them the ropes a little bit. So I think it was good because I've always wanted to be kind of one of the older guys, the leader to kind of help show everybody the the right way to do things. And and it was good. I think uh, I made a good impact there with some of the younger guys. How do you end up in Hershey? Is it a draft? Do they contact your agent? How did that work? How did you end up in Hershey? Uh, yeah, they just contacted my agent. I was just too old to kind of pick where you want to go if you have offers. And Hershey was the first team to offer it. And uh, I knew a couple guys from playing against them in college. Uh, but I just heard so many great things about the city and the hockey part. The fans are great on any given night. You're getting eight to 10,000 people without question. Um, and obviously the teddy bear toss had gone viral before I came. And so I thought that was that would be pretty cool to be a part of. And uh, no, yeah, it all just kind of worked out well. And I'm definitely glad I'm here. I know you're busy, but you have had a chance to go over to Hershey World, the Chocolate Park, experience that at all? Yeah, yeah, we did that. Um, at the end of last season, I came for a few games, and after the season ended, we kind of stuck around and, and did that. Uh, it was cool. Uh, you don't really realize how what the chocolate world is like until you kind of get in it, and it's just endless. There's chocolate, candy, stuff you don't really see uh, in a normal store just because uh, everything's here, and so they had – a bunch of different varieties and different stuff. And I definitely dabbled a little bit and got myself some chocolate for sure. What was the biggest adjustment to AHL? The speed of the game, the way it was played, size of the guys. What was the biggest adjustment for you? Um, I just think like the consistency, you know, in college, you're only playing two games a week and it's always on Friday, Saturday. Um, and then one of the first games this year is on a Wednesday morning at 11 a.m. Wow. And so it's just kind of kind of different getting used to playing and being ready at any time of any day. What's next for you uh, at this point? You you just you play well and you hope to get called up. How do, what, what happens next for you? Focus on myself. You know, I'm still learning the ropes a little bit being my first year. Just kind of trying to be a sponge and soak in all the information I can and and learn as much as I can. And uh, it's been a great experience so far. But, yeah, just kind of working on my game and it'd be nice to get called up, but um, I don't want to look too far ahead. There's still some things here that we're trying to accomplish and I love being a part of this group. Did you know Jake Gensel by any chance when growing up? Did you guys ever cross paths at all? No, not really. He left college just before I came in, so I didn't get a chance to play with him together. But um, one of our mutual friends had a wedding this summer um, and we went to that. And so I kind of saw him there, but uh, that's a pretty cool experience too. No doubt. What do you, what do you miss most about home? Could be the zoo, I think, really. I love <laughs> I love going to the zoo every year. It's always so big, and I feel like there's something that I haven't seen every time I go, um, and so it's nice. But 
I think the city as a whole is is extremely nice. It's grown a ton since I first moved there, and there's plenty of new stuff to do, and it's always nice, clean, friendly people. You know, it's always just a nice little little hometown feeling. Which high school did you go to? Uh, Papillion La Vista Monarchs. Okay. Do you do you miss going to Runza at all? Are you a Runza kid? Um, I actually haven't been there a whole lot. I've gone a couple times, but um, I think I'd only ever had the chicken fingers and fries, and they were just great. Of course, they were just great. No doubt about that. Ethan, hey, man, we appreciate it. Thanks for taking the time, and good luck the rest of the season. Of course. Thank you. Thanks for having me.